Welcome to A Word in Season. Today, some familiar and powerful words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. In John chapter 11, they were sung at Westminster Abbey at the beginning of Queen Elizabeth's funeral, spoken originally by Jesus to another woman in grief, Martha, grieving the death of her brother, Lazarus. You know, Martha gets a, a raw deal, I think. We, speakers keep concentrating on her being concerned and anxious about many things at one point. But here, she's outstanding. In fact, the gospel tells us Jesus loved Martha and her response to him. Well, when she first meets him, she says, even now I know God will give you whatever you ask. And when Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life, she says, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God who is to come into the world. Now that's every bit as astounding as Peter saying you are the Christ. She says to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Archbishop Rowan Williams, former Archbishop of Canterbury, he points out she's asking a question of many who are in grief. Where were you, Lord? Where were you? Now, Jesus doesn't say, you don't know what you're talking about or don't ask me awkward questions. He doesn't go into a great teaching. He gives her words of hope. Your brother will rise again. And then says, take me to the grave. Take me to the place where it hurts most. See, Jesus comes to us at the point of our greatest pain, accepts our questions, but he doesn't want to leave us in that pain. He wants to transform us. He is the resurrection. He gave Lazarus back to his sisters. Another woman in grief at a tomb hears a very familiar voice say to her, Mary, and resurrection bursts into her life. He came to the people who thought God would never want to have anything to do with them. To the woman at the well, marginalized by her gender, her ethnicity, and the pain of her life. To a supremely despised tax collector in Jericho. The woman in the well goes gleefully back to the very people who rejected her. And Zacchaeus makes these amazing gifts of uh, restitution and help to the poor. See, he has money, but money no longer has him. And the most exciting thing is he is the resurrection and the life now in us to others. He said, as the Father sent me, I send you. I've chosen and appointed you to bear fruit that will last. I wonder if you just thought, well, not me. Let me tell you about a, a wonderful gentleman that uh, Merle and I journeyed with many years ago. His health was steadily declining uh, to the extent that he was placed in hospital and continued to get worse. Then we got the joyous news that he was improving. And when I next visited him, I said, what happened? And he said, I can tell you the exact moment things turned around. I was in and out of consciousness and woke in hospital in the wee small hours of the morning to a very elderly sister sitting by my bed, a St. John of God sister. She, was, she had her hand on mine. He said she just smiled, did not say a word, but this enormous peace filled the room. Then he said after sitting there quite some time, she smiled again, nodded, stroked my hand and left the room. And from that moment, I knew I was improving. When I was able later to check with the superior of the order, because they were very helpful to Lifeline in the early days, she said, oh yeah, named the sister and said, she's one of our elderly sisters. She has dementia. You see, God really does choose the weak things of this world, the things this world considers nothing. I recently had the privilege of speaking in St. George's Cathedral to a service for chaplains, for blessing chaplains. And I was able to say then, at my age, what I first said as a 17-year-old choir boy, well, first sang as a choir boy, I believe in the resurrection. And I pray you'll discover Jesus as the resurrection in you and then through you to others.
God bless you.